from my brother today. I got quite a few old components of the 1980s, early 1990s. Here, for instance, a radio circuit. He has taken it apart in a very precise way, like he uh, do this always and did this always in the past. Uh, anyway, um, well, uh, I want to say give a kind of attention to all these old units and they were made in the 1980s, early 1990s. And of course we, she, we see here a cassette deck um, for cassette tapes. Uh, 4.75 centimeters uh, per second and invented by Philips in the early 1960s. As far as I know in 1962 they published uh, the first uh, cassette deck. And here it is of course say a Japanese made cassette deck of the uh, 1990s or the 1980s etc etc. Uh, you can see here two heads. One is here the pick up head and the uh, it picks up the sound electromagnetic via an electromagnetic way and here is the erase head but head but the erase head also plays a role in uh, biasing the record head and on my youtube channel and in my books I have explained that in my opinion very properly making a say an oscillator sine wave oscillator on 40 kilohertz that drives the erase head and at the same time it drives the record head. And when you want to know more about that technique, go to the World Wide Web or uh, look at my videos where I have explained how you can make a very simple cassette recorder deck. Uh, it was made for mono but of course for stereo you have to make such a circuit two times. Anyway, um, what's more to tell about all these old units of the 1980s? Uh, of course this is not related to the 1980s. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple transformer and here are the diodes that do the job of making DC out of AC. This is perhaps an interesting unit to show because these are say five potentiometers in a row and via this uh, sump nail uh, want to show it better. Sump nail knob here. The capacitor can be changed. Sorry, the resistor can be changed. So uh, it's in fact a precise resistor. And you can see here all these yellow points. And when you turn all these say knobs you can set that uh, potentiometer to a certain value and that ID was often used in 1970s circuits in combination with a varactor. Um, a varactor is a varicap 
that's more or less the European word for that. A varicap uh, is, say, a diode connected to this potentiometer in a certain way. There are videos on my YouTube channel where where I have explained that. But anyway, uh, when the say the barrier voltage to the diode is changed, the capacitance changes inside that barrier layer and you can tune via that way a coil, say a tank circuit, to a certain frequency anyway. So again this beautiful beautiful cassette deck unit anyway. Um, there were speakers in that original setup here. It's more or less a classical speaker. Uh, and perhaps it's interesting to tell that I found in the 1960s book the so called Sweet 16, where they used uh, 16 speakers of a certain diameter, not this diameter, but by the way, some somewhat bigger, uh, all connected to a front. And in that case, uh, they had a very good um, audio reproduction because uh, all these speakers, not these by the way, uh, worked together, of course, in the same phase. That's of course logical. Uh, and it meant that even with a very small uh, audio amplifier, you could drive such a uh, Sweet 16 uh, uh, loudspeaker box in a very proper way, and there was low distortion very low distortion and the article where that is showed is in a magazine on worldradiohistory.com anyway here we have of course the so-called classical sony walkman it's an icon of so sony in those days power on off etc etc perhaps it works with with one i think it work, works with one battery but anyway i have to test it and uh well uh it's a fm radio for the frequency for the frequency fm band going from 88 88 megahertz up to 108 or so megahertz Say, it's a beautiful icon of a, say, history that is in a certain way gone. He also gave me this beautiful, beautiful radio. And of course we see here directly that there is a coil for a long wave given, say, all the say the many windings here, the braided wind windings here, that's also important of course uh, uh, to say keep the uh, stray capacitance low, it's braided anyway and there is say a coil wound over it, not braided by the way, because it also, it only, not also, but only has to pick up a kind of signal, a part of the signal of that uh, long wave radio. Anyway, of course I don't know which kind of circuit was made here in terms of a short wave etc etc. So put my lantern a little bit to it. Absolute beauty of the 1980s and the early 1990s 
a radio circuit, but I have to say, of course. Also now in 2024, uh, they make these radios in more or less the same way. Analog, that's what I mean. Analog radios. Well, uh, what's this? I also got this. Uh, this surely is an audio amplifier. I don't know the chip. It's covered here inside the heat sink, but this is surely a audio amplifier made for the range of 2 watt or 3 or 4 watts. And that's logical because all these units here were, say, more or less in the same box. So we have a cassette recorder, player, uh, we have an FM radio, a long wave radio, short wave radio, uh, we have an audio and amplifier, and we have a tuning unit. So that is more or less and of course this um, that was more or less all to say thanks for watching pan over somewhat again beautiful old school and even now actual electronic Circuitry, of course, apart from the cassette player unit that's here. A beautiful unit, by the way. And you can surely use it. Uh, say, not perhaps to reproduce music, but for instance, in a hobby application, to say uh, pick up radio signals or whatever kind of signals. So that was more or less all to tell. Thanks for watching.